How's it going everybody? Ed Ricker here and today we're talking about the Mavic Pro as a new Mavic Pro owner. So when I first got the drone, I read up on it, I watched some videos, but there were a lot of things that I kind of also learned after the fact that I wish I had known at the beginning. So today what we're gonna do is act like I just got this drone and kind of go through the initial procedures, the initial settings, and the initial um, practices that you want to um, start incorporating into your routine, your habits with flying this. We have the battery in. We're gonna take our arms and flip them out. And we are going to take off our plastic gimbal cover and also the clamp that holds the gimbal on. Now, right now, I see I actually have a gimbal filter. You guys probably won't have one just yet, and if you do, we're gonna fly without it. So take off the gimbal filter if you have one, and uh, we're just gonna fly standard drone out of the box. First thing we do, and this is kinda like maybe the first thing on your checklist if you wanna make one for yourself, you wanna make sure that the propellers are in working order, that they're all on securely, the battery is in securely, the gimbal is facing somewhat forward at least, and it's not off to one side, or looks like it's maybe snapped out of its little mechanism there. And also make sure at the back and everything, all this is unimpeded because there is a fan inside. So you wanna make sure that there's nothing, you know, blocking the fan intakes and outtakes. Also make sure that your SD card is in. Most Mavic Pros come with their own SD card. I have upgraded to a 64 gigabyte. They usually come with a 16 gigabyte. And make sure that little uh, switch is set to RC and not Wi-Fi. We are not flying in Wi-Fi mode today. Also make sure your lens is clean because you don't want fingerprints that might show up in your video. Okay, the drone looks good, so we're gonna take our controller here, it's fully charged, spread our uh, little arms out, and then also take our antennas. Now the first time that I got this controller, I found it really difficult to pull these antennas apart. I think it was because it was new and so it had never been done before really. So unsnapping these and moving them upward was really a bit of a challenge but um, since I've worked it probably a hundred times by now, it uh, comes apart really easily. Normally I fly with an iPad, but we're gonna use my phone today, just like I used to when I first got the drone. And I think that probably 90% of you guys will be using a phone anyway. We're going to uh, use the cable, and I'm gonna plug it in the bottom of this controller because of just the way that my phone is shaped. I can't actually utilize uh, the small cores that they gave me that would fit on the sides here. So instead I have a longer USB to micro USB um, cord here and that's how it fits with my phone. Now the proper order for turning on all your stuff here is remote first and then now that your remote is on we're going to turn on the drone. In both of these instances you press twice on the power buttons once quickly and then hold it the second time and then you'll see the device boot up. When you power on the drone, you will see the props all kind of move just a little bit. You'll also see the gimbal move. And that's just kind of finding its center. Um, it's not a true gimbal calibration. We're gonna do that in just a second in the app. Once the controller connects with the drone, you will see ATTI mode turn on, then GPS mode, and then once everything is all ready, it says ready to go. Now we're gonna go into your phone and we're going to go to the DJI GO 4 app. And once everything is ready and you have the app booted up and you have your phone connected to your controller, which is also connected to the drone, it should say, go fly. Now at this point, I'm gonna start recording on my phone with a program called a Mobizen. That's how I record on my Android device. I'm also going to adjust my phone's brightness. I'm going to stop the auto brightness function because I want to be able to see this very clearly. I'm gonna probably use my battery a little bit faster because of that. Okay, so now that everything's on and we're connected in the Go app and we see an image, which is important, we wanna make sure that we see an image, we're going to do our calibrations. These are kind of the first out of the box calibrations that you'll want to do. First of all, on the upper left, you'll see the DJI uh, logo, and then to the right of that, you see ready to go. In the Android version, and I think most other versions as well, you can click on ready to go, and it will bring up aircraft status. Um, and then here, what you can do is you can look at your compass and your IMU status. It may say normal, but at the same time, because we've never actually started this drone before, uh, we're going to calibrate our compass and our IMU. Let's start with the IMU. So let's get out of that menu and go to GPS. You'll see up there on the top, in the very center of the screen, GPS with the little quadcopter logo. Scroll down all the way to advanced settings. 
states, and then scroll down to sensors state. Here you have IMU calibration and compass calibration. You see my compass actually is in the yellow, so it's not good right now. So IMU calibration, click on IMU, and now it says dismount propellers first. So it was important to get to this uh, menu, but what we're gonna have to do is basically fold up our drone and take our propellers off to, um, to calibrate the IMU. So let's do that real quick. So the drone is still on, but we're not gonna touch it with the controls. We are simply gonna start the IMU calibration. We'll hit start. And it says, IMU calibration, place the aircraft on dry and plain ground as indicated. So just having it this way, we've already gotten the first step done. Now we move it onto its right side. Let it calibrate. And then the left side. And go through all that it's asking for. And when it's done, we'll move on to the next calibration. So we have a successful IMU calibration. Once the IMU has been calibrated, you're going to have to uh, shut off the drone and restart it. And our next step is to um, calibrate the compass. Spread the arms back out. By this point, you probably feel that the drone is getting warm. And that's actually a good thing because if we just turn it on and start flying without it warming up, um, that's not always a good thing for the components inside and the motor. All right, let's put the propellers back on. Now, if you got the drone new, you would have had to do this anyway. Uh, so perhaps this is uh, good for us to be doing this on video, whatever. I would like to just address the fact that it's like 80 degrees right now and I'm getting eaten by mosquitoes and it's only the beginning of February. Back to our phone and uh, calibrate compass. So it says, make sure no magnets or metal objects are within five feet of the compass. So I think that actually the steps I'm on may be reinforced with some sort of metal. So what I'm gonna do is walk over here and we're going to do the spin that they're asking for. Rotate aircraft 360 degrees horizontally. Now my phone is not showing this very well because I'm also recording. It's a little too much for uh, the capabilities of my phone. So I am getting a little bit of chewed up image here, but um, rest assured <clears throat> when you do this, you should have a much better image if you have a phone <laughs> that's not an antique like mine. Now, let's calibrate the gimbal. So we're gonna go back into the GPS quadcopter uh, menu there, and at the bottom, right before the three little dots, you'll see the camera. This is the gimbal settings. So we are going to auto calibrate gimbal there at the bottom. Check the aircraft is level and nothing is obstructing the gimbal's range of motion. Check, okay. Let's begin. And you'll see that it's gonna go through a couple of movements. It's basically going to give us our uh, progress throughout the test. And it's just trying to figure out what's level, what it should be. At this point, you can also do remote calibration if you feel like it's necessary. Um, my calibration for my remote was pretty decent already, but you do have the remote controller settings here and you can do remote controller calibration uh, if you feel like something's a little wonky. Oh, by the way, see that magnetic field interference there, that, that warning message? That means that, yeah, there must be some metal in these steps. We'll move away when we wanna actually take off. Let's go into the, um, uh, the main settings here, the MC settings, and let's go down to the sensors. So one step down from the quadcopter icon on the left, you will see that little sensor icon. Forward obstacle sensing, this is good. So when forward obstacle sensors detect an obstacle, the aircraft will slow to a stop. Uh, maximum speed using obstacle sensing is 22 miles per hour. Um, so it basically has a 60 degree horizontal by 54 degree vertical view um, sensing what is in front of it and it will uh, try and stop the drone for you if it senses something coming up. Uh, tap to fly, allow horizontal obstacle avoidance. If activated, aircraft will automatically fly around detected objects. I don't want it to um, automatically fly around things. I don't trust it. I would much rather it stopped. So I'm not going to allow it to try and move to the side or whatever because since it doesn't have that field of view directly to the left or the right, if it tries to avoid something in front, it could very well hit a tree or a wall or something that's off to the side. So I'm not gonna have that on. That, that seems like that's a bad idea. 
enable backward flying. Um, this is basically only if you're tracking something and you're moving toward the drone. Will it move away and kind of follow you at the same distance moving backward? Um, that's fine because if you're tracking, normally you already know where the drone is and you can always kind of control that with your own movement. Enable obstacle avoidance. If activated, aircraft will avoid obstacles horizontally, otherwise it will slow to a stop. Again, off. Um, you can turn that on if you feel like you need to, but you're going to have to really know where your drone is in space. Advanced vision settings. Enable downward vision positioning. Yes, let's keep that on. Landing protection. Uh, aircraft will check the landing area when landing protection is enabled. Sure, let's keep that on. Precision landing. Uh, that will automatically collect landing information during takeoff. Yes, we'll talk about that more in a second. And turn on smart return to home. If obstacles is detected during smart return to home, aircraft will ascend to avoid it. You might have to turn that on or off depending on where you are. You know, if you're in a forest or something, you don't necessarily want it to go higher to return to home because it's going to crash into the canopy of the trees. Um, and by the way, return to home is where your drone originally took off from. And it's sort of an automatic feature to return to home if you have low battery or a disconnect. Finally, let's go back to MC settings and we're going to adjust return to home altitude. 60 meters I have. That's going to clear anything around here. It's going to go higher than any tree. Maximum altitude, 122 meters I have it set at. So in the United States, the FAA uh, limits us to flying higher than 400 feet. It's actually not allowed, it's illegal, we can get fined or whatever. So 122 meters is roughly 400 feet. So that's just really easy for you to not go above that threshold um, by setting your maximum altitude. Distance limit as well, I have it set to 200 meters. I will never have to go further than 200 meters. I will never have to send the drone out that far away from me. Um, if I ever do, I'll know where to adjust the setting to allow me to do that. Okay, so I have the drone on the grass, and we're just going to do a quick little takeoff. Now, there's two ways to take off. You can either uh, click on the left side of the screen. You see there's actually a takeoff button. So we can do that and slide to take off, and it'll rise to about four feet. Now, I'm not going to do the slide to take off. Instead, I'm going to do the left thumb down left, the right thumb down right. We're going to do that together. And then up on the left joystick, which is to raise the drone up. And there we are, we're hovering now. So it's that simple. If we want to land, all we have to do is press the drone or press the left stick down and wait for it to initiate its landing sequence and hold it until it stops spinning. Now let's go into our video settings. So over there on the lower right, you will see little sliders along with the playback button all the way at the bottom right. I'm going to click on those little sliders icon and you will see um, your ISO and your shutter. Now it's kind of cloudy today and kind of overcast, but what we're going to do is try and get a, a good shot, a good exposure out of what we're working with today. The higher the ISO, the brighter the image. The lower the ISO, the darker the image. Um, now with the shutter speed, it's the opposite. The lower the shutter speed, the brighter the image. The higher the shutter speed, the darker the image. So between the shutter and the ISO, you can kind of uh, combine the settings to get a good exposure. What you want to do is have the lowest ISO possible for any given image, and then adjust your shutter. Now, of course, there are filters and that sort of thing that will also help you darken your image without having to raise your shutter so much. But uh, for today, we're going to just talk about as the drone comes stock out of the box. So we're going to set our ISO to 100 and our shutter speed to 1 50th. Um, that actually looks like a pretty good image to me. If we're looking out at the grass and the trees, I'm also going to set my white balance to cloudy because that's what it is today. It's very cloudy. I talk about style and colorization and that sort of thing in another video, so I suggest you look at that. I will be shooting in full 4K at 24 frames a second because I just like that look. So there we are. We're going to tap the center of the screen to get a focus on those trees far away. Um, so home base is where we just took off from. So directly underneath the drone is now considered home. If it loses signal or if it um, you know, somehow has a low battery uh, critical message or whatever, it will return back to its home location the best it can. One way to improve that return to home accuracy is to 
uh, raise the drone at least 30 feet, maybe even 40 feet, and that actually enables it to create a downward positioning image in the drone to figure out where it has to go back as it returns to home. And it utilizes that precision landing sensor that we turned on earlier on in the sensor menu. So let's say we're done with the shoot and we want to land. There are two ways to do that. You can either do the uh, land function here, land aircraft now, and it's going to say OK or cancel. But what I usually do is hit the thumbstick down, the left thumbstick, just like we uh, use the left thumbstick to raise it up to ascend, we're going to descend into a land. And it's going to stop and hover there two feet or so. Keep pressing, and there we go. It finally initiated its landing sequence. You keep pressing down to descend until those blades stop. Now what we're going to do is turn off the drone and let it cool down for just a minute or two before we put it back in the bag. To put the gimbal clamp back on, I find that it's easy to uh, tilt the drone forward a little bit to allow the gimbal to kind of swing forward. Ultimately, you will see the drone nestle in just like that. You'll see uh, that the gimbal has its own little notch. Now, they also gave me a cover that prevents this plastic from getting scratched and smudged. I don't really use that because I don't fly with this anyway, so I don't care if this gets scratched. Always try not to do is not fly with the gimbal cover. Things that could happen if you do, um, it could actually prevent the drone from cooling itself properly because right now you see you're actually blocking the air intake. If I take this off, there's actually an air intake for that fan that's in the inside. So if you're doing this, you're blocking that air intake and your drone might overheat. Well, thanks so much for watching, guys. Um, I hope this was informative. I have another video coming out where we're gonna actually look at how we process some of the Mavic footage that we shoot uh, using Premiere and a PC. So if you have Premiere and a PC or you plan to get one, check out that video. It might help you with some editing strategy and how to process Mavic footage or really any footage that you take. All right, guys, if you like the video, subscribe because I'm doing more videos like this a lot. And uh, also give me a comment or a suggestion or something like that if you have something to say. And until next time, thanks for watching, guys.